So it's uh, Christmas Eve today. It's the season to be jolly. I see so many people being extra polite to the store owner, extra polite to the person at the gas station and, you know, being super courteous to each other and extra compassionate and everyone's got a smile on their face and everyone's off work and they're getting ready to see their family and they've got their presents wrapped, ready to give selfless gifts to each other and everyone's children's all excited and they're getting ready for the magic of Christmas and they've gone to the store to walk into the meat aisle to pick the most plump, juicy bird to sit in the middle of the table as a family and eat. But little do they know the amount of suffering, violence, fear that they'll be sitting down to dine on. They'll be sitting around a sacrificed animal while celebrating the life of Jesus Christ. Now there's nothing more contradictory to me than celebrating the spirit of Christmas around a dead body. But no one really looks at it that way, do they? They just see it as, you know, this is Christmas dinner. This is a tradition we all engage in. But no one really questions that tradition, do they? Is anyone going to look at the living conditions of these birds, uh, these turkeys? Even here in the UK, where it's prided as one of the highest welfare, you know, countries for animals in the world. That's all a lie. That's all a big fat hoax. These birds, even free range birds, are being raised in horrific conditions and it doesn't matter how they're raised. They're all hung up by their little legs and slashed across the throat, have their head cut off and are gutted and plucked and bled out before they're put on that table. Now those children who are sitting down dining on the corpses of these animals, these baby pigs who scream for their lives desperately in these gas chambers, these death dungeons, where they're lowered into carbon dioxide gas struggle for their lives violently, ripping off their own limbs because they're trying to escape. As these little kids dine on a slice of this animal, not knowing that it's a beautiful little baby piglet or an adorable chicken or turkey or a cute little baby lamb. As these kids dine on that animal, the parents of these kids might know. They might know something the kids don't know. What are you gonna do when these kids grow up and find out that they've been lied to? The thing about Santa Claus is no one gets harmed from believing in Santa Claus. It really is just a victimless story and it, and it helps with the magic of Christmas when you're a little kid. But the lie that we perpetuate about eating animals, that's one that can leave deep scarring, serious confusion, and we can grow up with a very twisted idea of what ethics actually are, of what compassion to animals actually means. We grow up loving some animals but dining on the tortured bodies of others. And then we pass these traditions, these cultural norms, onto the next generation of children. And so it follows. But if you're a vegan for the right reasons, what you're essentially doing is you're breaking that cycle. You're breaking that cycle of deception, of unjustified cruelty to animals. You're laying the foundation to a new world a world that's morally consistent and shows compassion to all. So this Christmas, if you're deciding to sit down to a centerpiece with your family and share the spirit of the holiday season, why not do it around a plant-based version, a tofurkey roast, a nut roast, some beautiful roast vegetables, a vegan gravy, and leave the suffering and death in the past where it belongs. So here's wishing you all a Merry Christmas, compassionate holiday season, and let's all step into the new year by signing up to Veganuary, Million Dollar Vegan, or Challenge 22. I'll leave the links down below. Peace. I love you. This is Smalley. Smalley's only little. You're not food, are you, Smalley? You're not food.
got food. Here's a little baby. Why don't people? Why don't people understand that you're just a little baby? You're only little smallie.